1 Corinthians chapter number 6. I'm just going to read a couple verses in the midst of this chapter. I'm going to conclude with verse number 12. I love verse number 12. I have hinged a lot of my Christianity on verse number 12 uh, through the years. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, our hearts were blessed. Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies. Our hearts were more blessed. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. Lord, as Brother Brian said it, thank you for the word of God. A lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It's forever settled in heaven. And Lord, help us to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Help us, Lord, to learn how to use it, Lord, to draw people to Christ, but to also fight off the wiles of the devil. Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to us tonight, you'd edify your people, you'd encourage them in the good things of God, and may we leave forth, Lord, uh, excited about our salvation and ready to tell somebody else about the good grace of God. Now, Father, I pray for Miss Crystal. I pray for Brother Donald and the children. You would touch them. I pray for Brother Ed that, Lord, you'd heal his knee and God, the infection would leave and God help him and Miss Vanessa through these trying times. Lord, I pray for Brother Kevin and his family. You'd comfort them in the passing of his grandmother. And God, I pray for any in his family. And I know through the years he's requested prayer for lost loved ones. And I pray as a result of her passing, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Father, I pray for Brother J.D. You'd touch him and help him. I pray for Brother Bobby. You'd continue to touch him and help him. Others that are sick, Brother Tony's grandpa and others, Lord, you'd be with them and touch them. I pray for those that are traveling, Miss Lisa and others. I pray for those that are providentially hindered. You'd be with them. But Lord, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd sit down amongst us You'd speak to our hearts. You would enlighten our minds to truth. And Lord, you'd draw us closer to Christ. Lord, use this unworthy vessel. Bless your people. Help us tonight. And certainly bless those that are working with the young people. And God, uh, and certainly if there's any amongst us throughout the building that are unsaved, uh, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Lord, we were undeserving. Lord, we know we're not worthy of your love, but we are grateful for it. And Lord, we love you, Lord, from all of our hearts. Bless now, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do ask these things. Amen and amen. Really, the message tonight is found in the introduction, but I I want you to look at these verses, and I want us to understand some things. Uh, The church at Corinth was a very carnal church church. There was a lot of worldliness and wickedness going on inside the walls of this church. Uh, There was all kinds of uh, things that we wouldn't even uh, feel comfortable discussing uh, amongst mixed company that was known things that was happening within this particular church. Uh, And the Apostle Paul was inspired of the Lord to write this letter uh, to rebuke them, to instruct them, and to enlighten them to some things. And in this chapter, we find that he is doing that very thing. I want you to notice, first of all, the defining of unrighteousness. 
Notice that he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, be not deceived. And he begins to define uh, some of the traits and some of the actions of unrighteous people. Now it's important for our day and age because... Uh, 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 you can uh, uh, turn on the TV, you can turn on the web, you can uh, 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 run into people at the grocery store, and it seems like uh, in the day we live in, uh, anything goes in so-called churches, uh, and that people say that they're saved, they say that they're going to heaven, uh, but they don't act like people that I know uh, who say they're saved and going to heaven. Uh, there are a lot of things that are accepted uh, by so-called churches, uh, but they don't line up with the Bible. Uh, you know what I love about the Bible? It's cut and dry. It's pretty clear. Uh, it'll let you know what is righteous uh, and what is unrighteous. Uh, and we'll look at these things uh, as Paul begins to define what is unrighteous. Uh, I don't care if it's popular. I don't care if Joe Osteen sanctions it. I don't care that there's a crowd moving away uh, and doing away with pulpits and doing away with preaching the Bible uh, and just having little Bible studies and little sermonettes. Uh, I don't care about what uh, a society deems as righteous. Uh, I care about what God says. Uh, and here we find Paul begins to define uh, the unrighteous. Uh, notice what he says, Be not deceived, uh, neither fornicators. Uh, 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 can I say that when it, we talk about unrighteous, uh, unrighteous means unjust. Uh, it means those who do injustice to others. Uh, and if somebody stands behind a pulpit uh, or behind a stand today uh, and they tell people things contrary to the Bible, uh, uh, they are doing them an injustice. Uh, they are unrighteous. Uh, and there are people uh, who are living unrighteous lives doing injustices uh, uh, and trying to attach Christ's name to it. Uh, and he mentions uh, uh, not only the unrighteous but fornicators. Uh, what's a fornicator? Fornicator uh, uh, biblically means uncleanness uh, outside of marriage. Uh, 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 in our terms it means uh, having a sexual relationship uh, outside of marriage. Uh, two single individuals uh, uh, conducting uh, a sexual relationship outside of marriage uh, is called fornication. Uh, now I know it's popular today uh, uh, to uh, kick the tires and try out uh, 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 the old gal before you marry her, uh, but that's not biblical. Uh, uh, you just save yourselves. Uh, uh, we wouldn't have teenage pregnancy. Uh, we wouldn't have a lot of the sexual diseases in our land uh, if people would practice abstinence uh, and then then they would practice uh, uh, just having relations with their own wife. Uh, that would solve a lot of society's problems. Uh, and we live in a day and age uh, where you got preachers who are fornicators. Uh, you got people sitting in churches who are fornicators uh, and they don't have any problem with it. Uh, well, God does uh, and we should. Uh, he said that uh, fornicators uh, are unrighteous. Uh, but he goes on to say not only fornicators, uh, he says, nor idolaters. What's an idolater? Uh, uh, an idolater uh, is somebody that worships the creature instead of God. Right. Now a lot of times, uh, man is the creature. Yeah. We are guilty of man worship. Right. Now listen, uh, 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 I don't want to get into politics much, but I will get into politics some. If you vote for mashed potato brain, something's wrong with you. I mean, they're even coming out and admitting he's got mashed potato brains. But can I say, uh, a lot of churches uh, got deflated in 2020 uh, when Donald Trump didn't become president uh, because the pastors worshiped Donald Trump more than they worshiped God. Might be why God didn't allow Donald Trump to actually get the office that he won in the election. Amen. Hmm? Amen. We're not to worship man. By the way, Donald Trump can't fix America. Amen. God can. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm for some things he stands for. Listen to me. But I'm not for everything he stands for. Uh, he's not the Messiah. Right. Mm. But can I say it's not on him. People worship themselves. 
They worship their jobs. They worship the golf course. They worship the fishing lake. Uh, they worship their ball teams. Uh, they worship uh, all kinds of celebrities, God help you. They worship all kinds of things uh, uh, more than God. How do you know if you're worshiping? Uh, if it gets more of your attention than God does, you're worshiping. Uh, if you worship the creature more than God, it's idolatry. But not only that, if you uh, 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 worship God with or before images, it's idolatry. Can I say that there are people that worship so-called God with statues? There are people who worship God with pictures. Do you realize the Bible, God told Moses through Moses not to make any graven images of him? Right. Here's what some people's problem is, Brother Phil, and I heard Jordan preach on this years ago. People get down to pray and they're talking to God, but their minds think about that picture they got hanging on their wall. That's idolatry. Hmm? Can I help you with something? Even John couldn't describe what he looked like. He says his eyes were as flames of fire, his countenance was brass, uh, his hair was white. He said he was so brilliant, I can't even put it into words uh, what he looks like. Uh, you want a picture of Jesus Christ? Go outside on a sunny day without your sunglasses and look at the sun. That's what he looks like. Uh, but can I say, we got all these little pictures we got all these little statues. we got all these little angels hanging around. All, that's idolatry. Nowhere in the Bible did God tell us to have all that stuff. You say, preacher, oh, it's harmless. It's just little knickknacks. Well, it offends God. Yes, sir. Mm, because we're bringing down heavenly, he heavenly standards to our standard. Mm, boy, it got real quiet there. Well, you might as well buckle up, bitter cup, because it's going to get rougher than that tonight. Huh? There are folks sitting in our Baptist churches that are idolatrous. Mm -mm. And you're welcome. Uh, oh, man, I can't. People got pictures of the Last Supper, Jesus sitting in the midst. That's idolatry. Thank you, Brother Tony. Uh Picture, people got the picture of the velvet Jesus with the little heart with the chains around it. Uh, yeah. Amen. That's idolatry. Amen. That's what it is. Huh? We're not to have any graven images of him. You know what we're to have? We're to have a biblical image of him. Yes. Yes, mm. uh, uh, idolatry. Can I say this? He said not only fornicators and idolaters, he said nor adulterers. Adulterers are married per persons who break their marriage covenant and commit uncleanness. In other words, uh, they have sex with other partners other than their own partner. Right. It's adultery. It's unrighteous. And I say, it goes on to mention, nor effeminate. And here's a big one. What is effeminate? It's masculinity becoming soft. Can I say for 15 years there's been a fight and a push in America to demasculate the male, to make men soft. Just watch some of the commercials. You got these little soft husbands wearing their little skinny jeans, and staying home while the mom goes and supports the family. Now listen. It's a blessing if you've got a wife that works outside the home. That's, that's hard. That's a difficult thing for her. Her heart's in the home. Uh, and I know in this society, uh, in order to have anything, many times it takes two incomes to work. Uh, but never lose sight of the fact, uh, in God's divine order, the man's the head of the household uh, and the woman's the heart of the home. Are you listening? Uh, 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 but we've got a day and age uh, where they're making men to be soft and to be sissies uh, I was watching one commercial. Uh, I used to like to watch that show, Cheers, because uh, I liked Norm. Uh, 
uh, Norm never did anything but sat at the end of the bar. He was a lazy bum, but he was there every time the doors were open. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, Ted Danson was on it. So I was watching this commercial. There's Ted Danson, this other fella, riding bikes down the streets with helmets on it. Uh, you ever see me ride a bicycle with a helmet? Uh, uh, stop and run me over. Just run me over uh, so I, I, I can use the helmet. Uh, listen, we've got soft. Uh, 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 whatever happened to having a, a scraped knee and rub some dirt on it and go on down the road and tough it up. Uh, 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 listen, life's hard. Uh, life's not fair. Uh, you're going to find difficulties. Uh, uh, the reason everybody's got to have a service dog. Uh, uh, the reason everybody's on medication. Uh, their parents never told them no. Uh, they never got a slap on the backside. Uh, uh, they never uh, uh, were told you got to tough it up. Uh, uh, they weren't told the teacher was wrong when they got a bad grade. Uh, you didn't study enough. You was wrong. Uh, uh, we have catered uh, and dumbed down uh, and softened our society uh, where people can't handle pressure. Uh, and when pressures come, uh, they fold like a deck of cards. Uh, uh, listen. No is not a dirty word. Some of you are doing your children dis dis a disservice by letting them run your household. Uh, you ask her right there. If she had come in and said, this is how we're going to do things around here, what had happened? She wouldn't have had them pretty white teeth in her mouth. I guarantee you, huh? Uh, listen. You better start training them up and teaching them and telling them no because society is waiting to ruin their lives. But we live in a day and age where men have gotten soft. Man's afraid to stand up even in his own house. Uh, and by the way, let me go pick on Clint because Rhonda's here. I know better in his household. But if you've been soft for 20 years, after a message like this, you can't go home, put your foot down, and say, bless God, things are going to change around here tonight. Huh? No, you're going to get a frying pan upside the head. You've got to earn that respect. Uh, you've got to show godliness. You've got to... Uh, Search yourself in a godly manner, not in a smart aleck manner. And by the way, if you're here today and you're soft, you didn't get there overnight, and you're not going to fix it overnight. I'm only preaching to people with white hair tonight. The rest of you are lost cause, huh? Uh Listen, I was thinking the other day, that generation of World War II, that's a different generation what's running around the streets of America today. Amen. Them people had some grit about them. Amen. Them people knew something about sacrifice. Those people grew up with nothing and appreciated anything they had and worked hard for everything they got. We got generations now, they don't work for anything. And they expect everything. And if hard times come, they wouldn't know how to handle it. But that word effeminate not only means masculinity becoming soft, but it also means uh, giving themselves to lasciviousness, which is lewdness, which means burning continually in unnatural lust. Now, burning in lust is not good, but burning in unnatural lust is even worse, huh? We see it's effeminate. You start softening up men, and all of a sudden, men like other soft men. They want to hang out and hold hands, sing come by all, swap slobbers. I mean, nasty stuff, huh? Uh, yeah. Can I say this? There's always been an element of it 
But the homosexual crowd wasn't as flaming as they are today back in my generation. Because they just might have got set on fire. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, uh, some of us remember when they'd come out of closet, we'd help them get back in. Uh, and can I say, it wouldn't be as prevalent today if the media didn't popularize it and make it seem normal. Hmm? Uh, I ain't even preaching. Some of you about to die. Well, hold on. He deals with effeminate. I ain't even got to the second point of the introduction. I'm just defining unrighteousness. He not only deals with the effeminate, but he deals with nor abusers of themselves with mankind. What is that crowd? That's the crowd guilty of the sin of Sodom. That is the homosexual crowd. That is the sodomite crowd. That is uh, the rainbow crowd. Uh, 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 it means uh, 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 that sin was not even a sin to be named among Christians uh, or mankind. Uh, but yet it's on every TV screen. Uh, it's on every movie screen. Uh, it's on Main Street. Uh, you can't go anywhere without seeing it, huh? I saw enough of it at Disney World, I was about ready to burn down the mouse. Uh, it's wicked. Amen. And uh, I'm not too accepting of them. And I don't mind letting them see my disdain for them. Uh, Miss Taya said we went in one store, I didn't see it said there was some kind of trans is about six foot eight in a dress and pumps. Uh, that's sick. Uh, can I say, this is going to be real popular. In 1974, the National Psychiatric Association, whatever its uh, 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 actual letters and title is, deemed people of a homosexual mind and that transvestite mind as being mentally disturbed. Can I say that was in their teachings up until 2017, and it wasn't until two years ago it just magically disappeared from their books. It's a mental illness, and they know that. And by the way, a lot of these shootings that are going on, these mass shootings, uh, is that crowd at the Super Bowl uh, celebration in Kansas City. You know, they haven't brought out the two uh, uh, teenagers' names. You know why? Because they were of that transgender crowd. Uh, uh, the shooting down in Nashville at the school, the Christian school, it was a transgender shooting uh, uh, that had a whole uh, 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 pamphlet and book uh, based on what they are saying you need to do is go shoot up society uh, and take back uh, what is rightfully ours. Uh, you know what is rightfully there's hell and that's where they're headed. Uh, uh, but friends, uh, they're mentally deranged until we start uh, uh, accepting that and treating them like that. It's not going to get any better. huh? Amen. There's something not right. If you got the mindset, you're going to go shoot a bunch of people so that you can promote your lifestyle now listen to me I got to qualify this if you haven't ever heard the message I preached 20 something years ago that brother Randy get you a copy of it it's not okay to be gay a lot of people caught up in this lifestyle They were pursued. There is an agenda of wicked people that have been turned over to reprobate minds that are demented and they pursue people to try and bring them into this lifestyle. They'll go after people that aren't real popular in school. 
They'll go after people that don't have a lot of self-confidence. They go after people that's kind of just uh, uh, floating along in life and not really has much ambition and don't really have a lot of people wanting to hang out with them or a lot of people wanting to date them. Uh, maybe they don't fit the mode of pretty people, whatever that is. Uh, and uh, 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 they, they pursue these people and they, they entertain these people and they start whining and dining them and they start to, uh, building a relationship with them and before long they start telling them they have feelings for them uh, and they make them feel loved and feel appreciated uh, and they introduce them to the thought uh, well you were born this way this is natural uh, and we can have and what they are doing is they are trying to corrupt people uh, and a lot of people have been uh, lassoed into this thing they didn't pursue it but they were pursued and they're caught up in this thing and many of them don't know how to get out of it can I say Brother Josh, the latest thing that I read is the average person caught up in that lifestyle has over 40 intimate partners. If it was so great, how come it's not satisfying? they got to move on to somebody else. Hmm? Huh? My grandbaby wants me. i got to go on and preach. Huh? We're talking about the effeminate and the abusers of themselves with mankind. Can I say, if you subject yourselves to unnatural acts, it is called abuse. And can I say that the devil crowd always seeks to inflict punishment upon themselves. Go study 1 Kings 18. When they got up and they, they broke down the altar, the Bible said they called on their God seeking fire from uh, uh, heaven. And when he didn't answer, they cut themselves. Go study the man, madman of Gadara. He inflicted harm on himself. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, you'll see this crowd always brings harm and shame to themselves. Now, a lot of times they show out, think that they're bringing attention to you got to paint your hair 47 different colors to get attention. You're getting the wrong kind of attention. Hmm? How many of you remember when your little grandma started, uh, in, you know, trying to dye her own hair and all little grandmas had blue hair? That was not a good look, was it? Now it's normal. Huh? Again, I'm preaching to people with white hair tonight. Uh, or you remember when Grandpa come in and he had shoe polish all in his hair and it was black anyway that's the only thing I had to lighten it up some of you about to die I promise you this you're not going to hear this kind of preaching in First Church you're not going to hear this kind of preaching in Seven Hills and let me help you something you're not going to hear this kind of preaching in Southern Baptist churches around here they're not even calling themselves Southern Baptists anymore. Big Bone Baptist is now the 3B Church or something like that. Burlington Baptist is now just Burlington Church. Uh, they're not calling themselves Baptists anymore. You know why? They're ashamed of this book. That's why. They try to sell the uh, uh, philosophy. We can get more young people if we drop the name. You know, you preach this book uh, and you stand for righteousness uh, and God will bless your church. Uh, He goes on to mention some more. Look with me in verse number 10, nor thieves. You know what a thief is? A thief, somebody steals from somebody else. And he says, nor covetous. Covetous are those who are caught up with the, the excessive love of money. They just can't get enough of money. It's more than the love of money, which is the root of all. They're, they're just absolutely possessed with having an excessive amount of it. Listen, we all need money. You need money to get and survive. Uh, and listen, the Lord knows you need money. He knows what you have need of. And the reason everybody don't have a truckload of money is because the Lord can't trust you with it. So the Lord gives who He can trust it with because they're going to use it for His glory. Uh, but there are some who are covetous. They're just uh, absolutely possessed with the love of money. Uh, and they're possessed with uh, 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 endeavoring to gain money. And they'll gain it by oppression or by cheating or by defrauding others. It doesn't matter. They got to have it. Uh, that's the covetous. Hmm? 
It's okay to drive by a nice house and say, boy, we should live there. It's another thing to park out in the, park, in, in the driveway and sit there and lust after it. Mm. Amen. And then he mentions drunkards. Know what are drunkards? Those given to drink regardless of the rules of temperance and sobriety. Uh, that's another thing a lot of these uh, so-called churches are doing. They're saying it's okay to have a little social drink. Uh, well, the Bible says we're to be sober-minded. Right. One drink makes you less sober-minded than zero drinks, so you don't need any. But the Bible talks about wine being a mockery and strong drink. It talks about, and, and I don't have time to get into the difference between uh, new wine and fermented wine. Uh, uh, but listen, Jesus didn't drink fermented wine. Uh, and Jesus warned about it. And the Bible warns about it. Uh, and by the way, you don't need it. You can get high on coffee. So there you go, huh? I'm talking about drunkards. He says, nor revilers. What's a reviler? That's persons that use their tongues intemperately. Huh? Somebody flies off the hand all the time, running somebody down. Somebody rails on others and reviles them with reproachable accusations and names. Huh? Reviler is somebody that wants to turn people against other people by, by accusing this person and calling them names, saying they're this and saying they're that, uh, without any merit. Huh? Revilers. But then he says, nor extortioners. Those are folks that by violence take from others what is not their due. And he said, that crowd, verse number 10, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They're unrighteous. So he defines un unrighteousness in verses. I want you to notice the distinction of the redeemed. Look at verse number 11. And such were, past tense, some of you. Hmm? But you're washed. You're ju sanctified. You're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Listen. We all were sinners. You could have even been guilty of these sins. But you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified. He deals with our past. We were those things. He deals with we've been pardoned. We've been washed. And he deals with our perfecting. We're being sanctified, set apart. And we're justified just as if we'd never been a sinner when we're robed in Christ's righteousness uh, uh, by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what separates us, sets us apart, and uh, our faith is what justifies us, but it's all work of the Spirit of God in our lives. Now let me say this. Your flesh isn't saved. Your flesh can still sin. But if you're saved by the good grace of God, you won't continue in your sin. You'll get, it, you'll get it washed. You'll get it cleaned up, as I preached this morning. We see that he deals in defining unrighteousness. We see the distinction of the redeemed. That's some of those things, what we were. By the way, I've known of people that had been caught up in that homosexual lifestyle. They got saved out of it. They didn't return to it. God changed them. He saved them and changed them. Huh? God can save homosexuals. I listen to some Baptist preachers and the way they preach, you know, every, every one of them is a reprobate. That's not true. Not all of them are reprobates. God can save homosexuals. God can save murderers. God can save extortioners. God can save adulterers and fornicators. God can save all that crowd. That's why we go to the jail. I once knew a Baptist preacher in Cincinnati said, you should never go to the jail. Them people are getting what they deserve. Well, they did the crime. They're doing the time, but they still ought to hear about salvation. We didn't deserve to be saved, but somebody told us about Jesus, and the Lord opened the door for us to go tell them. We're going to go tell them, and hopefully they get born again over there. Huh? Don't mean we're going to try and get them out of jail. We're just going to try and get them out of prison. Some of you will get that. But then, verse number 12 is where I want to get to tonight. But you all enjoyed that effeminate so much I couldn't get to it. 
He deals with the discipline to be exercised by the believer. Verse number 12, he said, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Notice what Paul is saying here. Two times he uses the phrase, All things are lawful for me. That word lawful, we could say legal. Can I say there are a lot of things that are legal for us. It's not illegal to do some things. Paul said all things are legal for me. He is dealing with what he deals with in the whole book of Galatians. He's dealing against Pharisees. He's dealing with these Pharisees that are attaching things you have to do to be saved. There are certain things you have to do to be saved. We've got some Baptist popes that do that. Some of them say you can't preach if you don't wear a white shirt. I've broken that law tonight. Some of them say you've got to go to the barber at least every two weeks. Some of them say you can't wear white wire-rimmed glasses. Some of them say that, ladies, your skirts have to be so many inches below the knees. Some of them say that you can't. I heard this one. I heard this one a few years ago. I about fell out. I thought I'd heard them all. I'd call the name, but you know the name. huh? A preacher got up and preached that a woman can't wear open-toed shoes because if she shows her toes, she's naked. Now, I've seen some ugly feet that need to be closed up in shoes. But show me chapter and verse for that. See, they're preaching their preferences and not preaching the Bible. And what gets all over me is they call it Bible preaching. But it ain't Bible preaching. It's preacher preaching. They heard some preacher preach it. A lot of people yelled amen. They thought, I'm going to go preach that. That don't mean it's Bible. Paul said, all things are lawful for me. All things are legal for me. I can wear a pink shirt and preach, and I've done that. Uh, matter of fact, Easter I wore a pink sport coat. Uh, now that would hair lip the devil of a lot of Baptist preachers. But I really don't care. I don't serve them. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. What does that mean? Uh, expedient means profitable. Expedient means useful. All things are lawful or legal for me, but not all things are profitable for me. There are some things, uh, even though I ha could have a right to do it, it would shed bad light on the church or on the Lord. So it's not profitable for me, so I'm not going to do it. Paul says all things are lawful for me, not, but all things are not expedient. He goes on to say this, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Things are not profitable if they possess a power to persuade you or control you. If it persuades you away from the Bible or persuades you to walk away that the Bible don't teach or if it controls you or your actions, it's not expedient for you. It's not profitable. You do not need it in your life. Now Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. What does that word edify or edifying mean? It means to build up. We know that. But it also means to instruct and improve the mind in moral and religious knowledge, in faith and in holiness. So if something is edifying me, it will... Uh, uh, improve my mind it will instruct my mind in moral and religious knowledge and in faith and in holiness so if it edifies me it's going to make me think more like Christ so all things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but not all things edify so if it doesn't edify if it doesn't improve my mind towards Christ towards holiness towards faith I don't need it because there's a lot of things that will make my mind go in the opposite direction. Even though they're lawful for me, they do not edify me. Paul wrote quite a bit about edifying. In 1 Corinthians 14, 12, he said, Even so, ye, for as much as you're zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. 
That crowd was seeking to speak in tongues. They were seeking some of the apostolic gifts. He said, uh, it's good you want to, uh, uh, you're zealous of spiritual gifts, but you need to junk that thought and you need to excel to the edifying of the church, things that cause the church to improve, to be built up, to increase in faith and holiness. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, he said, How is it, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. In Ephesians 4, 12, he says, uh, For the perfecting of the saints, talking about the gifts to the church, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh, in Ephesians 4, 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And then in 1 Timothy 1, 4, he said, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. So he deals with edifying. He deals with expedience. He deals with things that are lawful for us, but they don't help us. So let's major on what helps us. This is what I'm going to preach and I'll be done. Just because you can don't mean you should. Just because you can don't mean you should. Now I got this thought on our trip when we're going down the ship and I look up and this gal had vacuum sealed herself in a pair of, I guess they call them tights. Tight would be modest in this situation. This gal looked like she had two warthogs fighting over a corn cob in, a, in the back of this. I'm not kidding you, it was a mess. And I thought, she got them on. Just because you can, don't mean you should. Because I hadn't got over the image even yet today. It has scarred me for life. Miss Jackie, thankfully I didn't think of you when I saw her, okay? I didn't think of you. I'm, I'm trying to help you here, huh? Mm. Uh, just because you can don't mean that you should. We shouldn't if it doesn't benefit our well-being. That's why I didn't need to get on that ride the other night because it would not have benefited my well-being. There are some times when we've got to get it in our mind we're not as young as we used to be. There are some times we need to get it in our mind it is okay not to take the last bite. There are some times we need to get it in our mind we don't need to be involved in this because it will not benefit my well-being. Miss Annette and I had some errands to run last night, and so I told her, I said, well, let's go out to eat. She said, where do you want to eat? And it had been a while since we went to Chewy's. We love eating at Chewy's. I love Chewy's. We went to Chewy's. But I've been trying to cut back since I got off the boat. I didn't cut back. I didn't. When we got home, I couldn't even eat ice cream. We eat ice cream about every night, Brother Bob, at our house. I couldn't even eat ice cream. I was miserable. And then I, it came time to go to bed, and I rolled over on my side, and I thought, I'm going to lay here and die. I am miserable. Uh, it did not benefit my well-being. I should have stopped, Brother Ray. I knew I should have stopped. It came a point, I mean, I'm slopping it up, but it came to a point I thought, that's good right there. But no, there was still some on the plate. It did not benefit. I could. I did it. But I shouldn't. If it affects our well-being, we shouldn't. Hmm. Uh, reality is, we've only got one life, and we've got, only got this health for so long. And if we damage our, our health, how much can we really do for Christ? He gave us a life. We ought to take care of these bodies so we can serve Him more and better. Hmm? See, a lot of times we don't think about it in those terms. We just think about it in our terms. Mm, but really, all you got's one shot to serve Christ. You ought to take care of yourself. 
It's taken me 60 years to learn that. But we need to take care of ourselves. I'm just saying we shouldn't if it does not benefit our well-being. We can, but we shouldn't if it does not benefit our walk with Christ. Mm. There are a lot of things that we can that are legal for. If it doesn't benefit my walk with Christ, then I don't need it. Whatever it is. It's not important. I don't need it. There's a lot of folks that say, well, bless God, the Bible doesn't say anything against this. I can do it. Yeah, you can. But what are other people going to think about your Christianity if you do? There are certain places you shouldn't go. There are certain things you shouldn't do. There are certain things you shouldn't partake of because others are watching your life. And it affects your walk with Christ. Listen, I've told you all some of my personal convictions throughout the years. I, you know, we go into a restaurant, I don't order root beer because most of the time they serve it in a bottle. It doesn't look like a, like a root beer bottle. It looks like a beer bottle. And as sure as I do, somebody that I've tried to witness to or somebody I've built a relationship with, trying to get them to come to church, walk by and see me with, with that, and they're going to think I'm just like the guy at Crossroads. You know, there was a couple years ago a guy at Crossroads opened a can of beer on the, on the stage and took a drink and said, if Jesus were here, he'd drink a beer with me. No, he wouldn't. Huh? I don't want to identify with that crowd. And, if it, and, and there's nothing wrong with root beer, and I like root beer. And if you have root beer, I'm not going to look down on you, but I know it does not uh, benefit my walk. So I don't drink it out in a restaurant. Hmm? There are just certain things that I don't do. When we go in the grocery store, I do not take shortcuts or walk down the aisle where the beer aisle is. I don't. Why? Because as soon as I do, somebody's going to see me walking down the beer aisle and say, what's the preacher doing in the beer aisle? So I just don't do it. Even if it saves me steps, it'll benefit my well-being. I would rather, you know, uh, lose a couple steps and go around. I think I told this story. It's a true story. Brother Stacy will be here preaching in uh, for us in June. I, I'll never forget when he was in America. So I was down there. It was one of the first revivals I ever preached for him in America. So I went down there. I preached for him on Monday night, and I used that very illustration. I don't go down to beer aisle and all that. Well, after church, uh, I, I went to, uh, to stop by Walmart to get some stuff for the room. I got to have my Swiss rolls. I got to have my, you know, at that time I was drinking uh, uh, Pepsi Maxes, and I, you know, I, I have to have my stuff in my room. So sure enough, I get there, Brother Clinton. It's a true story. The soft drinks were in the same aisle as the beer. And I walk up, I see that, and just like the devil, he gets right on my shoulder and says, what are you going to do now, big boy? And this is what I said. I said, I'm drinking water all week. And I turned around, and I walked away from it, and I went and got my Swiss rolls, and just like the Lord, at the end of the Swiss roll aisle, they had at the end of the aisle, they had a little Pepsi, and there was some Pepsi Max. What a blessing. The Lord always honors your faithfulness. Right. Now, again, I'm not telling you, you don't have to walk down the beer. That's my personal thing. I don't go down the beer aisle because it does not benefit my walk with Christ. Mm. Put the cart in the cart corral. Always do. Why? Because if I don't, there's going to be a windstorm, the car's going to blow into somebody's car, and somebody's going to be sitting there and say, look at that preacher, he just put a dent in that guy's car. So I always put it up. And every time I preach this, we go to the grocery store, and all of a sudden a monsoon happens when we're taking the groceries out. You know what I do? In the midst of the monsoon, if i got to walk, I try to park close to them, but if i got to walk a mile, I put the cart up. I'd rather get wet than to dishonor the conviction God's put in my heart. Those are just some little minor things. But what I'm saying is if it doesn't benefit my walk, I don't need it. I can, but I shouldn't. I thought about this. I can, but I shouldn't if it doesn't benefit my works. Now, I'm not going to read them. I preach too long tonight anyway. But James tells us about our works, and I'll show you my works by my faith. And listen, works are important. I do not work to get saved. I work because I am saved because I've been created in Christ Jesus for His workmanship. And I do want to do good works. Uh, and uh, what a blessing to be able to do works. Uh, but if it's going to hurt and not benefit my work for Jesus, I'm not going to do it. 
Brother Greg Neal's coming next week, and yesterday he texted me, and he sent me the nicest text. Uh, Brother Rom's there today, and I introduced him to Brother Rom, and he mentioned, he said, Brother Doug, through your friendships and introducing your friends to other friends, he said, you have furthered the cause of Christ. I thought, man, that is... That, I'm just trying to do what I can do for the Lord. I, I'm just proud to be able to do anything for Christ. But I wasn't worthy of that kind statement. But if it's going to hurt something like that, I don't need it. There's some things I can do, but I shouldn't. And I won't. If it's going to affect my witness, I'm not going to do it. If it doesn't benefit my witness, I don't need to do it. And then lastly, if it doesn't benefit my worship, I don't need it. Hmm? I say, preacher, why don't we have this? And why don't we have this? And why don't we have this? Because it'll change this. And I'm not willing to give that up. I'd rather have true old-time worship than have something shiny, something pizzazzy, if it's not going to benefit, even though, listen, there's nothing wrong with having screens back here with the words of the songs on it. There's nothing wrong with, with having other things on the platform. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. There's nothing wrong with those things. They might just not be for us. And if it's not going to benefit our worship, we don't need it. Uh, if it's not going to honor the Lord I'm running from it hmm? and again other folks can do it that's between them and the Lord but unless God tells us to do it we're not going to do it All right. just because you can don't mean that you should I want you to keep that thought in your mind I want you in the days and weeks to come when you go to make a decision let that thought permeate you just because I can does it mean I should hmm? just because you can drive down Pleasant Valley 65 does that mean you should oh they patrol it every now and then but you'll probably get away with it but have you seen how many kids across that road on a bicycle I'd rather drive 45 and not hit a kid then drive 65 just to get up to the light and sit there a little bit longer. Uh, just because you can don't mean that you should. Think about that. And let that be an earmark in your life. Just because I can. Does that mean I should? That'll help you live a life that pleases Christ if you make that one of the earmarks. And that's what I wanted to get across tonight. That verse has helped me throughout my Christian walk. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. Sometimes we need to put the brakes on. Sometimes we need to pull back on the reins. Because even though I can, that don't mean I should. How about you? Has the Lord spoke to your heart tonight? The altars are now open. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get us home. God spoke to your heart. Might need to come and pray. Maybe we need to come thank him for the Bible. Maybe you need to come and just do a little business with him. Maybe you need to pray for somebody caught up in some of them sins we preached on. You know why they live that kind of life? Because they're sinners. You know why people are fornicators? They're sinners. You and I were sinners till we were confronted with the gospel and with Christ. Why don't you pray for them? Ask God to send somebody to change their life. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the truths contained therein. Thank you, Lord, that they were given to us that we could live a life, Lord, of righteousness and not unrighteousness. Help us all, Lord ever be mindful to please the Lord. Bless this invitation. Bless these folks in the altar. Help folks in the pew that are praying. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.